Hello and welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I'm very, very excited because I'm doing my first ever Victober TBR video. Plus, I have a special announcement. And no, it's not just about the fact that I finally cut all of my lockdown hair off. I feel so much lighter. But I've got a read along that I'm co hosting with Claudia from Spencer's Library, details of which I will tell you about in today's video. If you are new to the channel, I'm Jack, and if you're not new, welcome back to Spread Book Joy. Today is my very first ever Victober TBR video, and I've given myself a challenge to see if I can do this in one take. Uh, I've already messed up a couple, but I'm going to see if I can do this in one take. So, Victober is the month long celebration of Victorian literature that takes place in the month of October, and it's a booktube uh, readathon hosted by Katie from Books and Things, Kate Howe and Lucy the Reader and I will link all of their announcement videos in the description box below so you can go and find out all about their TBRs, the challenges are explained a bit more in depth than I'm going to explain them here as well and actually they're brilliant hosts with amazing knowledge of Victorian literature and some great suggestions for all those challenges. Now my TBR is not as extensive as some people's. I've been watching really excitedly, getting ready for this amazing month, celebrating all of the best of, Victor of Victorian literature, and I've been watching people's extensive TBRs. Mine is not very extensive, but it is full of really lovely books that I've been wanting to read for some time. I say full of, there's not many, and I'll show you them in a moment. But uh, the first one I'm going to read is a buddy read. Um, I'm going to tell you about the challenges first and see if my books fit in with them because they don't all necessarily fit in with them. And I haven't covered all the challenges. And actually, I think it's okay for us to not cover, like completely knock ourselves out to fulfill all the challenges in a readathon. Readathons are supposed to be relaxed and fun and enjoyable. And you can do an ambitious TVR. I've chosen not to for reasons I'll explain in a moment. Or you can just sit and read, you could read one book. And in fact, you might be clever enough to find one book that covers all of the challenges for Victober. So the reason I've not, got, I've not got an extensive TBR is that October is a really busy month for me. Not only do I have a family wedding, which we've been anticipating for some time, as you know, weddings and things like that, you know, haven't been a feature of the last few years and some people have been really unfortunate and had to cancel them. This wedding was uh, planned for this year and it is a small low key affair, but it's a close family member. It's my brother and I'm very, very excited about it. So I'm going to be busy with celebrations for that and um, you know there are pre-wedding celebrations and things going on as well so that's taking up part of it the other thing is I've also um, started two other new jobs so <laughs> I've got a lot going on so I thought let's be kind to myself let's take part in Victober but the books I've chosen are short but sweet oh I hope they're sweet well not necessarily sweet but you know they're short but quality texts so I'm going to get into the challenges and then I'm going to go through my TBR, including my announcement for a read along that I'm co hosting with Claudia from Spinster's Library, who is great fun to watch for Victober. She's going to come up with some amazing content. I've already watched her TBR video and absolutely, yeah, very excited for all the plans she's got for Victober. She's done an extensive TBR as well. I think everyone's got a bit Victorian literature crazy at the moment. And why not? It is the season changing to autumn. It's going to be October and cold, uh, crisp mornings and kind of darker days and evenings and perfect reading weather and also perfect kind of gothic reading weather. And there's a lot of really great gothic literature, isn't there, in Victorian literature. So yes, it's the perfect month for it. So what are the challenges? There are three host challenges. Now, I'm going to see if I can remember them. If not, I'm going to have to read them off my iPad. And I did want to do this all in one take, so let's see how I go. Katie from Books and Things, her challenge is to read a Victorian novel set in the country or in the city. Or I suppose you could do both, one that's set in the country and the city. Lucy the Reader is challenging us to read a Victorian book with a female protagonist. And Kate Howe's challenge is to read a Victorian sensation novel. And a Victorian sensation novel is one that I believe has a mystery or a secret at the heart of it. So that's very exciting. She's got a whole list. In fact, they've all got a whole list of things that could meet their challenge. There is also a, I'm going to get these the wrong way around. I'm just, if I get them the wrong way around, I'm just going to edit 
on the screen here. But there is a group challenge, which is to read a popular Victorian novel. And there are two ways to interpret that. One is that you could be a book, a book that is popular now, or it too is that it could be a book that was popular in Victorian times, but necessarily not now. So that's the other one. And the there is a, a bonus challenge, which is, can I remember the bonus challenge? No, nope, I'm gonna have to quickly look at my iPad. The bonus challenge, oh, and this is one of my favorites. Ah, It's to read aloud a section, or have read to you a section of a Victorian novel or Victorian book. And this is because famously the Victorians used to love reading to each other as you know obviously there wasn't that was the, one of the main forms of entertainment of an evening if you were lucky enough to be in a household that was literate as well um, if you weren't people would gather in public places and listen to people read dickens works were famously serialized and he sold out theaters here and in america reading his works and going on tour reading his works out loud so a lot of victorian literature it was assumed that would be read out loud so it's perfectly um, designed to do so and as a teacher i really read out loud to children a lot, but I've never read aloud any um, Victorian, any uh, works of fiction for adults. So I'm excited to take part in that. I'm thinking I will do a reading on the channel. I think that's what I'd like to do. Um, so yeah, or you can also just listen to an audio book of a Victorian a novel, which why not? Because actually I listen to audio book classics all the time. It really brings them to life. So. Those are the challenges. There is also a group read, which I am hoping to take part in partially. Uh, it is Gothic Tales by Elizabeth Gaskell, short stories by her, perfect for October, the spooky season. And yeah, that's those are the challenges. That is the official read along. There are some other read alongs going, along, uh, going on as well. Mine and Claudia's, which I'll talk about in a moment. And there is another one, a group read or read along of Wuthering Heights. And that is hosted by Marissa from Blatantly Bookish as part of her year long Bronte project. She's buddy reading it with several booktubers. I know Emily from Novel Novels is one of them, who is um, someone I follow and watch all the time. Hi, Emily. If I love Wuthering Heights, and I know a lot of people, I'm just getting my copy of Wuthering Heights out here. Um, a lot of people mistake it for a romance. It is not, and I blame Hollywood for that. I think it was probably marketed when it was adapted uh, as a romance. It is not a romance. It is a tale of dangerous obsession and revenge. And I just absolutely, it's one of the first classic books I ever read. I was 17 and I read it for A-level um, English Lit. And this is my A-level English Lit copy. I love this, it's so old. I've read it, I haven't read it for quite a number of years. And I will, I think I might dip in and out of this group read because I, I, don't, I do want to take part. And I do love this book and it's been many years since I've read it, but I've read it a few times. So it wouldn't be spoiling it for me if I just dipped in and out of the conversation and read a few chapters, particularly the ghostly chapters, which I think are so atmospheric and wonderful. So yeah, there's that going on. And I will leave a link to, um, I think I'll leave a link to Emily's uh, video, which is the one that I've watched on the read along and M Marissa's Victober TBR, where she announces this as well. And you can see the details of all the other booktube channels that are taking part and how to join their group. The other books that I'm reading, I am starting with, and I've got two copies of it because I thought I didn't have a copy. So I purchased a secondhand copy and then discovered I had two and that is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I'm buddy reading this with Claudia. Uh, basically, I've never read any Elizabeth Gaskell and I plan to read her work for Victober because um, I've I got her down as one of my reading goals for 2021 is to read some Elizabeth Gaskell. So um, I'm looking forward to reading Cranford. I remember the TV series a number of years ago, really cozy vibes off of it. And I do think it fulfills the challenge of reading, so Katie's challenge to read a book set in the country. Um, it's a very short book, it's less than 200 pages, and I don't think it's a novel as such, more as a collection of kind of short vignettes, perhaps, of the life of this town. Um, but they, it's a portrait of the residents of an English country town in the mid-19th century. 
Uh, Cranford relates to the adventures of Miss Matty and Miss Deborah, two middle-aged spinster sisters striving to live with dignity in reduced circumstances. Oh yeah, it says here, a series of vignettes. Uh, so um, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I feel like it will be a nice cosy read and it will also fulfill Lucy's challenge of reading a book with a female protagonist. So my other TBR book is going to be the Picture of Dorian Gray. This is a book I've wanted to read for some time. If you followed Claudia for any length of time, you'll know this is perhaps her favourite classic, which is high praise indeed because, uh, yeah, she's her focus for her channel is generally classics, so she does read quite widely, but she loves this book and. Um, when I said, said that I had a copy of it and was thinking of reading this for Victober, she was, yeah, we'll, we'll read it together. And actually when I open it up, she was thinking of doing a read along for people anyway. So we've decided to co-host a read along. The read along I'm excited about. I've never read this. I'm a complete newbie to the text and I'm excited to get into it. And it's Oscar Wilde's only novel, I believe, uh, because he was he wrote plays, he wrote, um, I've read his children's stories, but this is his only novel. And again, it's another short one. It's 197 pages and we are doing, hosting the read along on Goodreads and Instagram. So you can join our Goodreads group for discussion and you can follow Claudia and myself on Instagram on daily, we'll update our stories daily with our thoughts on the book as we go. But we're reading two chapters a day. There are 20 chapters, so over 10 days starting on the 16th of October. And we'll be using the hashtag Dorian Gray 2021 on Instagram. So if you wanna follow along with that, and if you want to post on Instagram as well, that's the hashtag we're using. And I'm really looking forward to it. I've never hosted a read along before, so I'm really excited to, uh, talk to people about the book as I read. I think I'm gonna give it, annotating it a go and yeah, I'm excited to read it. So those are my Victober plans. I'm very excited about all of them. Um, please do go and watch Claudia's TBR announcement video where she talks about the read along as well. She will have some amazing Victober for, um, Victober content coming up, I'm sure. And please go and watch all of the original announcement videos if you haven't already. I'm gonna carry on trying to watch some Victober videos uh, in the next coming weeks, Victober TBR videos in the next, in the few coming weeks and getting excited about it. It's actually kind of made me really look forward to autumn. Not that I don't like the change of seasons, but this year, because I felt like we didn't have much of a summer here in the UK, I'm like, oh no, it's autumn already. And I've kind of wanted a bit more sunshine. But the books and the thought of all this kind of spooky, gothic, uh, wonderful reading coming up has got me really excited for autumn. So if you're taking part in Victober, let me know in the comments below, what are you reading? Will you join us for our group read of The Picture of Dorian Gray? And if I've mentioned it lately, I don't know why, I keep saying the portrait of Dorian Gray, and I don't know why, because I know it's not that. Um, but yes, let us know, let me know in the comments if you're joining. If you're new here and you'd like to follow along uh, and see more of my rambling nonsense, just click subscribe. Uh, don't forget to hit like and leave a comment and ring the notification bell if you want to know when my videos are out. And hopefully I will see you again here soon. Bye. And I think that was done in one take. <laughs> Oh,